The traditions that come to my mind are some of the traditions that we've uh, explored in this project on religion and ecology, on, on, in the form on religion and ecology. You know, for example, the uh, in Hinduism, which is of course a colonial term for such a diverse range of traditions in South Asia and now planetary because there are not only ethnic South Asian communities around the world but um, practitioners who enter into this and so one dynamic in, uh, in that tradition is a love relationship, a devotional relationship and interestingly enough that love or bhakti devotional relationship extends to rivers and so the Yamuna, but especially the Ganga, the Ganges River these are, to use the term goddesses, or, these, are, these are focuses of worship in these traditions or of reverence, of deep reverence. And the reverence is reciprocal. Uh, these waters, the jaw, literally can heal or okay. give. So what happens when the rivers are polluted, totally polluted, eutrophic, they don't support life? You find in these traditions very interesting reflections on the issue, namely the pollution is one thing, the water is another, the, the Yamuna or the Ganga maintain their purity no matter what the pollution is and some say no, the river's in trouble, we have to assist her and some say she's dying, she's dead. And so this range of reflections that's totally new in the tradition in ways. I mean, there have been older issues with regard to the rivers and blocking the flow in the colonial period, but in every tradition you find this retrieval of very old values, religious values, being brought to new problems. Yeah, and I think what we tried to do in the Harvard Conference Series from 95 to 98, when we brought together scholars and practitioners of the world's religions and then did 10 volumes of edited works, reflecting on how do we retrieve these attitudes towards nature, these environmental ethics, and re-evaluate them in light of present circumstances and then reconstruct because that's what the traditions have done over time. That's what theologians do for the Christian traditions. That's what rabbis do for Judaism, imams, for Islam. So if we come back to the traditions of Asia, which is what I study most, uh, and what actually got us most, or I should say it got me most concerned about this is Asia modernized as China and India with a billion people each um, moved into the industrial era. What would this mean for the planet, much less for their own ecosystems, which are being devastated by rapid and relentless modernization without limit, uh, without a sense of limits? So, for example, in, in East Asia, in China, the traditions of Confucianism and Taoism and Buddhism have very rich, as we know, uh, sensibilities about human-earth relations and this notion that we're embedded in these concentric circles of, of human life but also of nature and of the cosmos itself. So the, the basic cosmology is in both Taoism and Confucianism is heaven, earth, and human are one flow. There's not a radical transcendence to another world but heaven and earth being the universe and earth systems as that which uh, holds and bodies um, the human. And the notion is that cultivation then, or spiritual discipline, means one cultivates oneself in relation to the seasonal cycles, to the changes of nature, to the dynamic and transforming powers of the natural world. Those are actual terms from the tradition. And that cultivation means there's a profound sense that we are affected by these cycles, these seasons, these changes, but we also affect them. And that's what we have to retrieve for, certainly Chinese culture is doing that at the moment, but we as a planetary community can retrieve these traditions in modernity to affirm a multicultural, multi-religious, but planetary civilization. And the Chinese are very much re, re invoking this notion of what is Confucianism in the modern world? What is Buddhism and Taoism? And there's a revival of these traditions. And in fact, the government is also pointing towards what they're saying is a counterpoint to the destruction of the environment, social problems, 66,000 protests a year in China around the environment. And they're saying we must create 
ecological culture, drawing on our own traditions. So the government is doing this, academic departments of philosophy are trying to draw these traditions forward. Um, on a popular level, a woman named Yu Don wrote a book on Confucius. It sold 10 million copies. There's this, this sense that materialism on this scale, with a spiritual vacuum, such as happened under Mao, needs to be um, recalibrated, rethought, and that the spiritual traditions of their own um, historic past uh, need to be put back into place for not just sustainability, but I like to think of the flourishing of the earth community. We like to say our relationships not just sustainable, but flourishing. Hmm. And that um, gives us, I think, a new zest about what we're doing.